Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we're taking our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Chief Health and Science Officer, Dr. Mira Irons in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Uh, Dr. Irons, let's start by reviewing this week's numbers. Uh, still uh, very bad news. Absolutely. Um, Todd, the surge continues, which is the sad news. Um, today's numbers from this morning is that 3,831,430 um, people in the United States have been uh, diagnosed with COVID-19, and we've had 140,909 deaths. Um, that's an increase of 58,000 from yesterday. Uh, from yesterday, um, I think we, you know, hit a record last Friday of 75,000 cases. Um, if we think back. We think back just a few weeks ago, we were looking at 20,000 case, new cases a day in the United States. Um, and over the last few weeks, it's consistently been 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 cases. Um, if you look at the uptick in the t in cases, um, the, the burden continues to be in some way. Um, Florida, Georgia, Arizona, Texas, and also into California. Although we're starting to see upticks in, in states where we haven't seen big surges. Um, the, um, we're also seeing, um, and, and we're starting to see states dial back um, as, um, as the upticks are starting. Uh, one of the questions uh, a few weeks ago was why the mortality rate seemed to be uh, kind of trailing the actual mm -hmm. uh, number of new cases, or mm -hmm. uh, are you seeing now an uptick in hospitalizations and in that mortality rate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think that we've known that the hospitalizations and the mortality seems to follow um, the, the di a new diagnosis by at least several weeks. Um, so that this isn't surprising that we're now seeing the trend up in hospitalizations. Um, we are hearing that hospitals and ICUs are, uh, are exceeding or reaching capacity in Florida. Um, Texas, uh, Houston Medical, Texas Medical Center um, reported that they were beyond ICU capacity. Um, volunteer physicians, military physicians are being deployed to some of the southern states. Um, so we are starting to see that increase in hospitalizations that that we were frankly expected. Um, I think that uh, fortunately, we are not seeing the percentage of ICU admissions per hospitalization that we saw back in the spring. Um, there may be several reasons for that. One might be that people are getting to the hospital earlier. Um, we're, we are protecting our vulnerable um, uh, populations, um, but also there are um, there are some treatments available now that weren't available back then: dexamethasone, remdesivir, um, and so um, that seems to be um, maybe some encouraging news um, as opposed to what we were experiencing back in the spring. Uh, we are seeing an uptick in the death uh, the death toll. We're seeing a rise of about sixty percent. In the past week in Arizona, Texas also breaking records there, but uh, still sits well below um, mm -hmm. some of the numbers we were seeing earlier in the pandemic. Can you give us some perspective on that? Yeah, I think that, you know, there are probably several different reasons for that. Um, the first is that um, the average age of people being diagnosed now, as opposed to in the spring, are, is about a, a decade and a half younger, um, so that we do know that younger, pa younger people seem to have less severe um, manifestations. People may be getting to the hospital earlier at an earlier stage. I think the healthcare system is also more prepared um, to take care of, of patients with severe COVID. Um, we've had a lot of experience in that area. Um, we do have some treatments. Um, remdesivir is available. Um, dexamethasone is available. Um, and um, we are protecting our vulnerable populations. You know, if you think back to the spring, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the people that were severely affected and dying were those in nursing homes. Um, and so um, we have learned a lot um, since that time. So there are probably a variety of reasons that explain that. Well, Dr. Irons, one big news item this week was the government's mm -hmm. order for hospitals to bypass the CDC and instead send all their COVID-19 patient information to a central database in Washington that's under HHS. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk about what this means in terms of transparency and data collection? Yeah. So, Todd, since April, hospitals have had dual reporting requirements. 
um, they were reporting both to the CDC and also to HHS. So it was extremely burdensome for hospitals to be reporting to two different um, uh, groups that were changing requirements um, uh, all the time. Um, the CDC database is more robust, but it's also less nimble. Um, they can't just add new reporting requirements within 24 hours. So the decision last, last week was made to only require that hospitals report to HHS. Um, the reasoning behind that was that um, uh, rapid information was necessary for allocation to inform you know, federal efforts. Um, the AMA has been reassured that the CDC would have access to that data. Um, so we're hoping that, that we see that. Um, but the AMA has also always said that data is, is very important. Um, it's important to guide, um, guide actions during the pandemic and transparency of the data is also very, very important. So we're following that closely. I mean, the HHS database is not open to the public. What impact does that have on, on folks who are building models and other health officials? Well, it's a concern. Um, you know, a lot of the models um, and the, the databases that we look to, um, to look at ICU utilization, ventilator, ventilator use, even remdesivir utilization, um, we're, we're getting that data from the CDC. Um, and so if that data isn't transparent, if the HHS data is not publicly available, or if it doesn't seamlessly get be transmitted back to the CDC, um, that information won't be available. Well, there was concern. There was some uh, disappearance of some of that real-time data from the mm -hmm. CDC dashboard. Um, you know, there is concern, and I think some of the nation's governors are asking to actually delay that shift. Any, any thoughts there? Well, I think, you know, the um, it's important. It's important that that data be available um, and we're monitoring it closely. So moving on to other trends in the news that we seek, you, you mentioned some rollbacks. We're seeing that in uh, certain states. Controversy with masks. Let's talk about what are the hottest trends that you're seeing. So the role, I think the rollbacks are the new are the new trends. Um, you know, if you look at Miami, uh, Miami-Dade County um, imposed a new curfew um, that starts at eight at night. 8 p.m. till till six o'clock in the morning. Um, you states, uh, cities like Chicago, um, where we're seeing a small uptick, are responding really early and beginning to roll back and not allowing bars um, to serve individual to to serve just alcohol if if they don't have. Uh, food, um, if they don't have the ability to serve food, um, limiting the number of people in gyms, limiting the number of people that can be together. Um, so, um, so states are starting to roll back requirements. We see new counties starting to add mask requirements. Um, I think probably about half the states have mandatory mask laws. Um, Lake County, Indiana, which is almost a suburb of Chicago, um, now has a mandatory mask law as of this morning um, for, um, for public areas. And we also see businesses really stepping up. Um, you know, large businesses like Walmart, um, where uh, where they have where stores are actually um, in states that do not have mask requirements, Costco, BJ's, um, you know some of the other large requirements are now uh, large businesses are requiring masks, um, but you know masks have become politicized. Um, it is you know it's 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 odd to me um, that's something that's so important for public health. Could become a political issue, um, but I think that as the numbers are surging, as businesses are starting to come in um, and recognize that masks will not only um, protect people but will, will protect their employees, their own employees, um, from uh, essential workers from getting exposed. Um, I'm hoping that the tide is starting to turn. Yes, yeah, so we still see resistance in a couple of states. Uh, some. Uh, kind of uh, squabbles between governors and, and mayors. Uh, you know, what are the thoughts on that? Well, you know, it's um, it's it's hard to understand as a physician. Um, it's really un it's hard for me to understand uh, how something that's really simple, um, really simple that has been proven um, to protect people and to decrease um, transmission um, can become such a contentious 
um, such a contentious issue. Um, but what it really comes down to is individual responsibility. Um, and I think that if we can, we can sort of reframe this and just refocus on um, explaining to the public why it really is important um, for them to wear masks, um, to protect other people, to protect their family members to protect um, others that they come into contact with. You know, the one difference we have with COVID-19 is the, the, high, the high rate of asymptomatic um, infection. Um, so that someone, you know, we're kind of used to with other conditions, um, isolating ourselves um, if we have symptoms of illness. You know, if, if we have a fever, if we have, you know, a runny nose or a cough, um, people tend to um, somewhat self-isolate, but we see, we don't see that with COVID. There's a significant um, asymptomatic carrier frequency. So because of that, you don't know if you, if you have COVID. Um, so that wearing a mask is just, is just a really reasonable thing to do. And I understand that even when some people uh, do get tested, the turnaround times on some of those tests is so long, oh. uh, that in itself can further yeah. complicate things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we're seeing um, from from elite, from especially specimens that are going to the large reference labs um, are, you know, five, seven, eight day turnaround times. Um, you know, if you think about that, unless someone is is quarantining themselves from the time they send that specimen um, until they get the result. Um, you know, people are, are out um, interacting with others um, before they even get their test results. So it's it's beyond the time of being able to protect people or, um, or isolate yourself. So last question, there was uh, more controversy around uh, the school guidelines, school reopenings. Uh, any perspective on that? There was some talk of the CDC changing their guidance. So um, as far as we've heard, the CDC has, um, uh, has not changed their guidance, um, but they may be, um, they may be issuing um, additional um, clarification or additional guidance to go along with the guidance they put out. Um, I think that, you know, Dr. Fauci has been saying um, all along that the school reopening um, uh, decisions have to be made within the context of activity of COVID within your community. You know, so I think that's the important um, distinction that's kind of been lost in this national discussion. Um, you know, there are communities with very low COVID activity and potentially school systems in those communities um, may, may reopen um, differently or may have different considerations than a school system where there's really active um, COVID-19 disease. Um, and I think it's those individual decisions that are gonna be made locally that are really gonna be important. Uh, last uh, comment, uh, AMA statement on the death of Congressman John Lewis. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, a really important statement um, that, that the AMA put out last week. I think we were all affected. Um, by the death of, of Congressman Lewis. And, you know, if I could just read from the statement, um, you know, it was in his death, we lost a champion against injustice everywhere in health and other policies where inequities persist. The AMA and physicians across America unite today in national mourning. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Um, that is it for today's COVID-19 update. Again, Dr. Irons, thanks for being with us here today and sharing your important information. We look forward uh, to talking again next week and hopefully we have some better news. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with another COVID-19 update and for updated resources on COVID-19, go to ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us today and please take care.